Hey, welcome to the ground instruction for exercise 16 out of the flight training manual, which is about takeoffs. By now you've seen or done quite a few takeoffs, so let's just take a step back and deconstruct what's happening because there's actually quite a lot going on in the takeoff. The flight training manual dives straight away into the different types of takeoffs and wind and surface condition and all of that. And we'll look at that later. This lesson is just going to look at how to do a simple normal takeoff using the school checklists. Before we start, you should grab your pilot operating handbook and learn where to find your takeoff speeds for the airplane you will be flying. Today as an example, we're going to be taking a look at the Cessna 172 model, so flipping over to the normal procedures section. And to takeoffs, we find a rotation speed of 55 knots indicated and a climb speed of 70 to 80 knots indicated. Then over here under speeds for safe operation, you have the best rate of climb is 78 knots indicated and the best angle of climb is 64 knots indicated. And what do these speeds mean? We cover this briefly in the ground section for climbing, but as a review, VX or your best angle of climb gets you the shortest distance to altitude, whereas VY gets you the shortest time to altitude, and that's your best angle of climb. And that's because here at VX, you're getting more lift at a cost of more drag whereas VY is more efficient. So VY is the preferred normal takeoff speed unless you really need the altitude over a short distance, such as if you have an obstacle at the end of your runway. So let's briefly talk about flap. Your operating handbook will have the ultimate say as to whether or not you take off with flaps, depending on what type of aircraft you're flying. In this example, the 172, takeoffs can be done with flaps up or flaps at 10 degrees. Never take off with more flap than the POH or your operating handbook specifies. Remember that even though flap gives you more lift, they also result in more drag. And that extra cost of the drag on the, on the takeoff roll can actually be so high that it, it overcomes any additional lift. So we're going to be using the school checklist to guide the takeoff procedure. But if you have your own aircraft or if your school doesn't have a checklist, then follow the guidance in your pilot operating handbook. If, however, your school or organization has a checklist, then always follow that checklist. For more detail on that, you should really check out that link um, from AOPA on uh, why you should use before takeoff checklists. OK, so picture this. We finished the run ups and now we do the pre takeoff checklist. So fuel selector both, that's pretty self-explanatory. And now you do the interior checks. So seats locked, seat belts secure, doors and windows secure. And you can give all of these items a tug or a push to verify that they are secure. I've had a door pop open on me uh, many times during my training, so it can definitely catch you off guard. You might wanna give your door a nudge just to make sure it's secure. Flight controls free and correct. This is where you check your controls for freedom of movement and to verify that they're moving in the correct direction as well. So you're gonna pull the yoke towards you, check the elevator and check the ailerons as well. And then lastly, go ahead and check the rudder, make sure they're moving in the right direction. Heading indicator set to compass, that's easy. Flight instruments set and checked. This is usually a visual scan for me and it goes like this. So it'll go airspeed zero, wings level, set to airport elevation, VSI zero, set to compass, and wings level ball center. And we can see by this scan that uh, the either the suction gauge isn't strong enough for the gyro yet, or it could mean that this instrument is an op. You can see that it's got a bit of a tilt there. Um, so a quick, quick scan on the ground before you get up in the air can mean identifying small, in, small instrument errors like this one and make sure uh, that your aircraft is good to go. All your instruments are working. Moving along, we just check primer in and locked, car pee cold, mixture rich for sea level trim, centered for takeoff, and finally flap, which we will set for 10 degrees. Next, before leaving the run-up bay, you do the, the departure briefing. So check the windsock. We're gonna assume no wind today. Then we'll be doing a normal takeoff, so read that section. Flaps 0 to 10, we choose 10 today. Throttle full open, rotate at 55 knots indicated, and climb at 78 knots indicated. Departure briefing. This is where it gets tricky because Langley has a lot of noise abatement procedures that must be followed. So let's say for argument's sake, we're going to be we're going to be departing off runway 01, which doesn't have any noise abatement, and we'll be doing a straight out departure to the north for a Trinity departure. 
And then for vital actions, we need to go further down the checklist. So the vital actions briefing is a takeoff briefing that covers what you're going to do in the event of an emergency, such as an engine failure. And this is how I usually verbalize these actions. Engine failure before takeoff, reject takeoff. Engine failure below 800 feet will do the following. Glide speed 65, gentle turns, carb heat hot, landing site select, mixture rich, and throttle adjust to try to regain power. If above 800 feet, same actions, but more selective on the landing site. Just to give you more detail about this briefing, if you are below 800 feet and you do have an engine failure, it's likely safer to attempt to land straight ahead in a field or another flight surface rather than trying to turn back towards the airfield. I highly recommend you check out links and also do a quick search on the impossible turn just to give you a better understanding at why it might not be a good idea to try to turn around and make field on departure. Okay, once you've done your vital actions briefing, you can uh, flip your radio over to tower and write down the takeoff time now before we leave the run-up bay. Then always check for traffic, pull out and pull up to the hold short line. Before calling tower, always check for traffic on final approach. Once you have been given clearance by tower, you can cross the hold short line and either line up to take off or take off, depending on your clearance. Once you are on the active runway, make sure your lights and your transponder are on. The time between when you line up on the runway center line and when you take off should be as small of a pause as possible. If cleared to depart, you should be departing as soon as safely possible. Lined up on the runway, you should have your heading indicator set to the direction you are facing. So in our case, it's gonna be 010. And then go ahead and add full power. RPM should be at about 2,500 RPM. So call out at max. And when you begin your roll, your airspeed indicator should start to increase, so verbally confirm this as airspeed alive. But could you keep your eyes down the runway. One thing I would like you to do on takeoff is to keep a very tiny amount of back pressure on the control column. By having that little bit of back pressure, you can keep the weight off the nose wheel in the acceleration. By rotation speed, if your airplane does not lift off on its own, at that point, you can increase back pressure on the control column. So a normal takeoff would kind of look like this. Once you reach rotation speed, you can pitch the nose up to a climb attitude. And just like the cruise attitude, it might take you a little time to figure out what exactly that attitude is. So don't stress if you don't get it right away. You're at full power, so your pitch is gonna determine your airspeed in the climb. And here we're pitching for about 78 knots. Runway 01 is a relatively short field. So to gain altitude faster, we can also pitch for VX, which in a 172 is 64 knots, but don't go any slower than 64 knots indicated on your takeoff. In order to get that airspeed, we're gonna to need to pitch a little higher, so bring the nose up a little more. Once you have what I call safe altitude and safe airspeed, which is about 200 feet of altitude and about 10 seconds or so after takeoff, you can bring your flaps up. So I might get you to call out your altitude and airspeed before you bring the flaps up, just to get you into the safety habit of checking and verifying that you're actually at a safe altitude and safe airspeed. When you bring your flaps up, the nose will want to pitch down again, and that's okay. Um, you'll gain airspeed and you can reach room for 78 knots on the climb out. So here are a couple things I'm going to harp on you for if you don't do them. The first is to keep straight with the rudder. On the, on the takeoff roll, it's very important to use your feet and really keep that airplane going straight down the runway. Um, do not allow it to swerve left or right. It's only going to delay your takeoff and make your takeoff a lot more messy. So keep straight using the rudder. And you're going to need um, quite a bit of right rudder on the departure as well. Fly runway heading after your takeoff. This will be hard to do because you'll be in a very nose up attitude, so you're going to lose reference of the ground. But just keep in mind that you should be flying runway heading always on every takeoff. Glance down at your at your heading indicator if you have to and use your peripheral vision as well as a guide. And last thing, if you keep a slight bit of back pressure on the control column while you do your takeoff roll, you might even feel the point of rotation 
um, as your airplane wants to start to lift off the ground. And that way you don't even really need to look at your airspeed indicator to tell you when it's a good time to rotate. Okay, and that's how you do a normal takeoff. So I hope you're excited. Um, watch this again if you need to kind of get that whole process down in your mind. It's a lot easier if you think about it on the ground and then next time you get in the plane, you'll kind of know more about what to expect. If you do have any more questions, feel free to bring them to your next flight lesson. I'm gonna be doing a few more presentations on takeoffs um, to get into more of the minor details such as how to do a short field takeoff, how to do a soft field takeoff. But um, really just uh, use this one for now as a starter for, for just how to get uh, uh, up in the air. Okay.